Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Kovac here, and for this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. For this one, I'm going to be going over all of the pets, including the achievement reward for uh, raiding with Leisha 6, Pets of Pandaria. I will be going over each and every one of them, their movesets, um, their strengths and weaknesses, and whether or not you should consider using them in PvP. Keep in mind that some of this will be opinionated on like for example the abilities you should choose or how good they are and this is more lean towards uh, perhaps people who may just be getting into pet battles or are, are not too familiar with these pets really. I know the veterans maybe this will be helpful for you as well. So uh, let's hop right into it. So first of all there are three raids with this achievement. Heart of Fear, Morkers on Vaults, as well as uh, Terrace of Endless Springs. So first up, we're going to start out with Heart of Fear, starting with the Amber Glow Stinger now. The Amber Glow Stinger is an HH breed, got a crap ton of health, it's got extra speed, and then very little attack power, so it's a pretty tanky pet and can be decently quick. For its moveset here, it's got Barb Stinger, Glow and Toxin. So a dot or a up front damage, spammable ability that has a 20% chance to put up a dot. Amber Prison, which used to be only a unique ability to Rascal Bot. Uh, Lift Off, which is just a great ability on its own. Cocoon Strike and then Predatory Strike, which both are pretty good. Now, he does drop off a Blade Lord. Tyak, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So the build I would run is Barb Stinger, probably Amber Prison, but really Lift Off is good too, and then really either of these two are pretty good. So he can be a decent pet, I would say. Does come in only one breed, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, I think it would be a pretty decent pet. I mean, aside from him having pretty low attack power, I mean he does have quite a bit of health and can ditch out quite a bit of damage. Uh, with lift off predatory strike uh, even barb stinger does quite a bit of damage if you can get that dot off so overall I'd say amber glow stinger is a pretty good pet I haven't tried it out for myself may in the future but uh, I'd recommend getting it if you're interested oh and it is a flying type by the way next up we have the core thick swarmling who is also another flying type drops off of the imperial Zir Zorlock, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He is a power power type, meaning he has a crap ton of attack power, um, more than average speed, and then very low health, which is where, which is why uh, he's got so much attack power. First up, he's got Slicing Wind or Club. Slicing Wind is just a very very bad ability. Uh, it's basically just like triple snap and thank god those are the only two abilities like this basically it has a chance to hit one to three times it's not like m abilities like flurry where you're guaranteed a second hit if you're faster it can literally hit one time if you're just the unluckiest person in the world you can literally hit one time each and every time you use it or you could get lucky and get three times and it'll do quite a bit of damage or the alternative, which I recommend choosing as Club, which is just a straight up 361 humanoid damage. Next up, he's got Swarm of Flies with his high attack power. It does hit pretty hard. Swarm of Flies, I believe, is one of the few dots that can actually be placed down while your opponent is dodged, if I'm not mistaken, unless if they change that. Pretty good ability on its own. Amber Prison, once again. Takedown, which will do double damage if the target is stunned. Hint, hint, Amber Prison. And then Impale, which will do double damage if the target's below 25%. But really, that's not going to come all into handy. I mean, Impale already does quite a bit of damage on its own anyway. So why would you need, uh, what is that, like 902? So, as far as the build I would go with, obviously Club. Really don't recommend Slicing Wind. Uh, either or these are pretty good, but usually you want to go with Amber Prison because it can synergize with your takedown. When I think of this pet, 
I just think of uh, the Twilight Clutch Sister. It will absolutely destroy that pet with Amber Prison plus Take Down doing extra damage to it as well as doing double damage to that dragon. So pretty much it's a dragon killer even though flying types do generally take more damage from dragon types. So yeah, um, haven't tried it out for myself but uh, probably will soon hopefully. Seems like a fun pet. Maybe during the Critter Week that's coming up. Uh, I believe tomorrow actually. So uh, yeah, overall Really, his health is the big issue, but he can be decent, I'd say. Definitely pretty good against the Twilight Clutch Sister. Next up, we have the Limping Amber, which is a magic type. Um, as far as I know, I want to say it might have two breeds, but the breeds have not been updated yet. Or it could just have this one. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, some of them do have multiple breeds, keep that in mind, regardless of this uh, little error here with Pet Battle Breed ID. Drops off of Amber Shaper Unzock, and he's got Ooze Touch or Poison Spit, so basically a uh, upfront damage into a dot or just a straight up 325. Um, he's got Amber Prison once again, Drain Power, which is a uh, Deals a little bit of damage up front and then gives you a damage boost for two rounds as well as decrease your opponent's damage for two rounds by 25%. So it can be quite handy. Amplify Magic, I do enjoy this ability quite a bit. Uh, the short three round cooldown increases any damage that you do uh, by 50% for two rounds. So it could be really if you have a bunch of dots up or you just got like doing damage boost touch, pretty much anything and it's going to increase the damage. Counter spell which does a little bit of damage and interrupts your opponent for one round if you go first but the living amber is not very fast with 257 speed. It is a speed balance breed after all. It's got alright health, great attack power but that speed is just lackluster. So the build I would go with is probably ooze touch, amber prison and probably amplify magic unless if you run like a dazzling dance user or something take advantage of that counter spell but really you're not going to be outspeeding a whole lot of things to take advantage of that <coughs> uh, overall uh, not a very good pet I would have to say uh, haven't tried it out myself because it's just not that interesting I mean Ember Prison's pretty good and I love Amplify Magic but really there are a bunch of other oozes that could do its job way better Alright, let's move on to Ravenous Prideling, which is by far the hardest pet that I had when it came to uh, getting it a drop, actually. I'm not sure why, but literally weeks later, I finally got it a drop for me, and I was like, damn, uh, that took a while. Now, Ravenous Prideling does drop up off the last boss in Heart of Fear, Grand Empress Shekzir, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, as far as I know, it actually does have two breeds, Power Balance and Speed Balance. I just happen to have the Power Balance. Basically, uh, between the two breeds, it's a flip-flop of these stats right here. So, Speed Balance would have 310 Speed and 293 Attack Power, but the health is the same. It's got very low health. Uh, it is an Elemental type, so he's got C, which is just a basic attack has a chance of hitting very low or very high. Blast of Hatred, which does extra damage if uh, you're struck first. So, so basically you need to go second. So you need to get hit and go second. Uh, but he's got pretty decent speed, so not really going to be sec going second with that. Breath of Sorrow, which I do like this ability. Short three round cooldown, does quite a bit of damage and reduces your opponent's healing by 50% for two rounds. So you could throw this on like say an Emperor Crab and that healing wave which can heal up over like what 600 or something it's pretty insane. That'll be cut down by 50%. Disruption which is a unique ability and effect only to the Ravenous Pridling so far. Four round cooldown removes all buffs and debuffs from the enemy. Now something you really need to know because I have tested this before. 
is this literally only works on the front line pet. Does not work on the back line. I really wish it worked on the back line too because then this would counter sunlight pets quite a bit when they have all their photosynthesis up but fortunately it just doesn't which sucks really badly but let's say you have your opponent has an MPD in the front aka the mechanical Pandaren Dragonling and he throws up decoy if you can predict when he's going to throw up decoy go for disruption it will take down decoy yeah so it only works for the frontline pet keep that in mind surge of power just a big heavy nuke um, and you're basically locked in there for two rounds you can't do anything but uh, the great thing about it you're just doing a crap ton of damage with surge of power so pretty cool ability right there and then life exchange which can be situationally useful since he does have low health basically let's say that you're at like 500 health and your opponent's at like a thousand you use it and it basically brings you guys closer and more even in health so it's pretty good whenever you're about to die and you're like oh crap gotta use life exchange can uh let's see how what's the word I'm looking for bring back the game in your favor basically is what I'm trying to say overall uh not a very good pet he's okay I'd say he's okay uh, he would be really good, probably tier 1, if Disruption worked like uh, how a bunch of us wish it would, but fortunately it does not. Uh, the way I would go is see if uh, either of these are good, but Disruption might be better, considering it can take down decoy and stuff like that. And really either or of these are good too. Probably go with Surge of Power just for that big, heavy 825 damage. Alrighty, and last but not least, for Heart of Fear, we have Spawn of Garillon. Spawn of Garillon, it is an HH breed. It has the record for being um, the second highest health pet that you can own in the game. First, obviously, being the Illic Plushie. And uh, it has even more health than Damn Pebble. But um, it has a crap ton of health very 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 low attack power like holy crap look at that uh, it might even be the weakest attack power pet besides the Elec plush in the game and it's got more speed which is very weird because really they should have gave it more attack power but um oh yeah he does drop off of Garlon which basically looks just like him anyway he is a beast type too uh, he's got Trample and Claw, so Claw is just basically a basic attack, and Trample does some upfront damage and 10% of your target's health. This is only really good if your opponent is a high health pet, or you are under the weather sunlight where your health is bo boosted, so that's really when that could be situationally good. Uh, shell Armor or Ravage. Ravage is just, for two turns you do some damage. But if you can kill an opponent's pet with Ravage, it will heal you for a little bit of health. If it crits, it's obviously going to do more. And then Shell Armor is just a damage soaker. Lasts for two turns, but on a five round cooldown. But what's really unfortunate is the uh, damage absorption is actually based off of your attack power. And since he has very crap attack power, he's, out, uh, he's actually the weakest um, Shell Armor user in the game. <laughs> I couldn't get the words out for a second there. At uh, 167. And he's got Burrow or Lumbering Charge. Lumbering Charge is basically like a, um, a slow and steady where you take a turn to charge up and then next turn you do quite a bit of damage. And then Burrow, you just basically burrow on the ground, avoid an attack, and then come back up and do a range amount of damage. But uh, he's very slow, so uh, I don't know if you're going to be outspeeding anything, really. So the build I would go is Claw. I would still take Shell Armor, even though it's very little. Uh, Rampage, I mean, not Rampage, Ravage. It's just not that good on him, especially with that weak damage right there. And probably Lumbering Charge, because you're just not very fast. And Lumbering Charge does hit a lot harder than Burrow does, even on the high end. So yeah, probably go with Lumbering Charge. Overall, not a good pet, I'd have to be honest. Has an awesome model though. Because my model, I mean, 
my icon on YouTube is Kobach. That's where I base it off of. I absolutely love the um the model on these Kuchong Kunchongs, which I believe that's what they're called. These little bugs. Yeah, he's a pretty cool looking pet, but not not the best for PvP anyway. All right, so that's hard to fear. Let's move on over to let's type in faults. Yeah, Nermogazon faults. I might be pronouncing that wrong, so apologies for that. First off, we'll start out with Biao Z. He drops off the last boss in there, Zen Z or Quin Z, I think whichever way you pronounce it. Um, at first I thought he might have two breeds, but I believe this is his only breed. Uh, health balance. He has more than average health, just 24 over the baseline, 1400. A lot of attack power, but very low speed. Um, he's got Crusher, Gilded Fist, both basic attacks, but Gilded Fist is a unique ability only to him. And good thing about it is even on the low end it hits for a decent amount. But Crush on the low end is not as good. But Crush can hit harder, potentially, than Gilded Fist. Stone Skin, basically a damage absorber, just like Shell sh Shield. Uh, 87 per round, last 5 rounds, and it's spammable. Phase Punch, which not very many pets actually have this ability. Basically, it's a swap out like Nether Gate. Does a little bit of damage and swaps your opponent's pet in. Clobber or Nimbus. Clobber is basically just a stun, just like uh, Crystal Prison. Nimbus, it's basically like a lesser version of Rain Dance. You know, Rain Dance boosts your hit chance by 50%. Nimbus is only 20%, but it lasts 9 rounds and is spammable. But it doesn't, uh, has nothing to do with your crit chance, only your hit chance. So, the build I would go with is Gilded Fist. Uh, stone skin because he's not fast enough to take advantage of face punch. You really want to be faster than your opponent when you're using a swap out ability. Same thing with his clobber. You usually want to be faster. You're going to take advantage of a stun. So Nimbus is probably the way to go. Overall, <coughs> excuse me. Overall, not a very good pet for PvP. Pretty cool looking though. But I'm not the best in the world, I'd have to say. Next up here we have, oh yeah, he is a magic type, forgot to mention that, but uh, also, Comet is also a magic type. A Comet drops off of Elegon, so all the more reason to do the raid to get that mount as well as this cool looking pet. He's uh, basically a celestial, one of those Quillins. And uh, this is his only breed, speed balance, so he has over 1500 health. Over 300 attack power, but very low speed. It's got Arcane Blast, which is basically just a ramp up ability. Each time you use it, adds 81 damage to it. If you swap out, this does reset, so be mindful of that. Or you could just take Feedback, which is a straight up 325 damage. Next, here we have either Nightmare, which is a pretty good ability. Works just like um, Breath of Sorrow that we've seen on a previous pet. Um, and does pretty much the same damage as well, where uh, it and it has that same effect of uh, reducing the target's healing by 50% for two rounds. So pretty cool ability. Or celestial blessing, which is pretty good as well. Basically, you throw it up. It will last for five rounds until you finally use it. The next pet you swap in, they will instantly get a shield on for three rounds or four if you count the turn that it's thrown up on. Um, I believe it will even go first before minefield if your opponent happens to throw minefield out. I'm not too sure about it. I do know that any other ability, like basically just a basic attack, it will go off first. So that's why I say technically four. Uh, Starfall, which is basically a way lesser version of Moonfire, but it does crap damage. It's an AoE to your opponent's pets, and also an AoE heal to your pets as well. Uh, it doesn't heal that much, nor does it do a lot of damage, but it does put out Moonlight. 
not just just not a very good ability overall or illusionary barrier which will block two attacks including your own so be mindful of that uh, the way I would go <coughs> would be feet I mean not feedback arcane blast uh, really either of these two are good so you could really choose either but I would probably go with celestial blessing it's just a pretty damn good ability and out of these two huh if you were doing a moonlight team maybe starfall but on any other team illusionary barrier might be better and here's why because if you throw it up usually you're gonna go second anyway because he's slow as crap if you throw it up you could take those two turns to either throw up celestial blessing and then switch into another pet by then if your opponent was attacking your barrier you would have your next pet swapped in with celestial blessing on them ready to fight while they took those turns to break down your your wall basically they can't do anything or you can stack up your arcane blast while they're trying to break through it as well you can use arcane blast because it does stack even if it misses or ju or just straight up doesn't do damage so yeah overall uh, not very good for PvP I have tried them out um, there's just a lot more better pets that use celestial blessing than them but still overall pretty cool pet I'd have to say definitely recommend giving them a try if you're interested next up we have stone claw who drops off the stone guards which is the first boss inside of that raid he only has one breed available to him as the HH breed has over 1600 health decent attack power but very low speed he's got strike which is a basic attack or thrash which is a multi hit ability just like flurry where you're guaranteed two if you go first but that third one is a 50 percent chance he's got leap which basically does a little bit of damage out front and increases your speed by 100 percent for only one round so usually you'll just be faster than anything or stone form which not a lot of pets actually have this ability basically you throw it up you'll heal for 684 for 30 turns you can't do anything because you're just sitting there healing can't attack or anything but usually nine times out of ten your opponent's not going to be able to kill you anyway so if your health's getting really low that's the best time to pop this dust cloud which is basically a dodge it's just a dodge but it's just a different ability type and it has a different icon or weakness but which basically works like jar smelly liquid doesn't do as much damage as jar though um, Basically, it reduces your opponent's speed and damage by 50% for one round. So usually this is really good to use when you're going first. <coughs> now, for the build. Uh, there are pretty much quite a bit, like maybe a couple of builds you can actually do with Stone Claw and be pretty effective at it too. But I would personally run probably Thrash. Um, if he's a da if I have him on a dazzling dance team, uh, I'd probably go with stone form. But if not, leap might be the way to go. And really, either of these are good. They're only really going to be good if you're faster. So on a dazzling dance team, if I were to absolutely choose one of these, probably would go with um. Oh, I'm not sure actually. Probably st dust cloud, since it's a dodge. Since if you go first, you'll dodge that turn plus the next turn. But weakness is just as good, so um, you can really do great with either or. Overall, he's a decent pet. Haven't tried him out for myself, but um, he might have potential. We'll just have to see. Alright, lastly from this raid, we have the Wayward Spirit, which is the only undead of all these pets. He only has one breed, the power power type, which is kind of interesting because, as you can see, for a power power type, he has more speed than attack power. I, I kept thinking to myself, maybe they just messed up and meant to put this as this. But uh, who knows, he's still considered a, a power power type. He does have decent attack power though, but that extra speed can help. He does have crap for health though, but he is an undead, so who cares. He drops off of... Uh, Oh god, I'm going to try and pronounce this, uh, 
Garajal, the spirit bender, that little troll whenever you're fighting all those trolls in that little center platform. Choose between Siphon Life or Spirit Fire Bolt. Spirit Fire Bolt's basically just a basic attack. Siphon Life is a dot that will heal you each time it does damage. Spirit Fire Beam, which up until now only the Fragment of Anger had, but now the Wayward Spirit does, and it's also the the hardest hitting of the two. Curse of Doom, basically a set it and forget it. It's a big heavy nuke dot. After four turns, it'll go off. Doom 624. Uh, unfortunate thing about Curse of Doom nowadays is that there are a lot of fast pets with dodge, so it's really easy to avoid. But if you can get it on, for example, like a humanoid who can't do squat about it, then it'll do a crap ton of damage. Roar of the Dead, which is basically a howl. It's just an undead ability. Basically, you throw it up. The next ability that you do will do a 100% more damage. But this will count for anything, so keep that in mind. This could count for a Fiendish Imp's Immolation. It could count for a Siphon Life. So you have to be very careful at when you throw this up. So a good time would be to throw Curse of Doom up. So right before it goes off, you throw up Roar of the Dead, does a crap ton of damage. And then you got Fade, which is basically a portal. Uh, the user always goes first, and it will swap in a random pet it says. But in my experience, and I have tested this out, if you have the Wayward Spirit, like right here, and you have a mount and you use fade, it will always go into the pet next in line. So it will always go into my ancient nest guardian here. Uh, I've never seen it go into the third pet before. Either I just got very lucky or that's just how it works. So the build I would go with would be Spirit Fire Bolt. Uh, either of these are good, but if you're going to run Roar of the Dead, probably Curse of Doom. But if you're going to be running Fade, probably Spirit Fire Beam. Curse of Doom is good too. Overall, um, I'd say it's a decent pet for PvP. Uh, there's a couple different builds you can do with it. Plus, it's got the added benefit of being an undead. So it's got that sweet, sweet racial there. So overall, pretty good. Definitely would recommend getting it if you're interested. Now, the last raid we have, which has the least amount of pets in it, it's from the Terrace of Endless Spring, and there's only two pets, actually, in this raid. <coughs> First up, we have the Azir Windseeker, who drops off of two Salong. A little dragon, he looks just like him, too. He is a power speed breed. He's got less than 1400 health, decent attack power, and decent speed. Uh, like most dragons, he's got normal dragonkin abilities. He's got Breath, which is a basic attack that does range damage. Tail Sweep, which will do extra damage if your opponent goes first. Or strikes you first in this case. Oh, no, it just works. You just basically go second. My bad. I thought it worked like a um, Blast of Hatred. Ancient Blessing, which is a flat out heal. And has a added benefit of increasing the maximum health of your active pets by 5 per level for 9 rounds. So that could be situationally useful, maybe under like Moonlight or something. Seer so Magic, which removes all buffs and debuffs from the user. Uh, you have to be careful with this ability though, although it's great against stuff like, for example, Cyclone used against you. Or Curse of Doom. Stuff to watch out for. If you have, for example, your uh, Clockwork Gnome out and you throw down your build turret and use Seer Magic, it will get rid of your uh, your turret, so keep that in mind. Also, abilities like Sticky Grenade and um, that one ability that uh, that Elemental type has. What's it called? Explosive Brew, I believe that's what it's called, yeah. Basically, they work the same way. If you use Seer Magic, it will detonate instead of just flat out removing it. Same thing for traps, like Magma Trap and Snap Trap. If you use Seer Magic, it will just go off on you and stun you. So not very good for stuff like that, but for stuff like Cyclone, can be quite good. Wing Buffet, just a flat out swap out like Nethergate, but 
uh, aside from Nether Gate and other swap outs, Wing Buffet will swap into Lowe's health pet. So keep that in mind. It does quite a bit of damage, though. I believe it actually does more damage than um uh actually no i think it would if this was a 260 attack power pet it would do 280 just like the ss breed fiend to shimp he just has more attack power so that's why it hits that hard and then we have devastate which is basically a lift off but in the form of a dragon kin ability does a range range amount of damage can hit decently hard at that 400 range or really hard in that 600 range so oh yeah i forgot to mention he is a dragonkin pet, the only dragonkin that we have for this achievement. So the build I would go with, since he is decently fast, I would probably run Breath. Um, most of the time I run Ancient Blessing, I rarely ever run Seer Magic on pets, except maybe the Ascendant Fetish, Wing Buffet, or Devastate. Hmm. Really, both of them rely on you going first, so... I might actually run Wing Buffet since it is a different type of damage from my basic attack here. And it's a swap out, so. But really, either or is good. It's just uh, I would probably run Wing Buffet. Overall in PvP, I'd say he's not too bad. He does have low health though, but um, that Dragonkin ratio can be quite good actually. Uh, Was it 50% I think? Yeah. 50%. So yeah, overall, not that bad of a pet. Recommend getting him if you're interested. And the last pet we have to collect for the achievement is the Spirit of Spring. This is by far my favorite pet from out of all of them that you can collect. Um, it does have two breeds, I do believe. Speed Balance and Power Balance. Speed Balance is definitely going to be the one you want. <coughs> Drops off a leashy inside of there. I believe it looks just like no, it doesn't look like him. He kind of I believe the boss actually looks like the Pandaren Water Spirit. But um so he's got pretty great health, pretty great attack power and pretty great speed. His uh stats are I I oh, can't get the words out. Are similar to the Scalded Basilisk Hatchling basically, except he does have more attack power and I think maybe more health just a little bit so right here we have lash which is another multi-hit ability if you go first you're guaranteed those two hits and then the 50 percent basically for that third surge which is a pretty damn good ability um always goes first and it can screw with a lot of your basically with a lot of pets you could use surge to screw with multi-hit abilities like lash you could use it whenever you know your opponent's going to go left off in the air or dive on the ground or something or when they're about to use a decoy or something it's just a pretty good ability uh doesn't do all that much damage but that's okay just the fact of you going first is pretty damn good flash freeze which is a unique ability to only a handful of pets really has a short 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 damn cooldown of three rounds holy crap um, does quite a bit of damage and reduces your opponent's speed by 25 percent for damn five rounds this is longer than damn uh, that one ability that the kunlai runt has uh, I don't know why it's why it's escaping my mind right here frost shock yeah only two rounds of frost shock uh, Flash Freeze is way better, by far, than, uh, than, uh, damn Frost Shock, because, I mean, it's not spammable like Frost Shock, but it just lasts a lot longer and does more damage, and your opponent will be considered chilled. So if you wanted to use it like, let's say you threw up Flash Freeze, and then your pet also has, um, What's that ability called? Deep Freeze. Womper actually does have both of them, so Womper's actually pretty good. But we're not doing a video about Womper. Uh, the other ability is Soothing Mist. Uh, in my experience, this is a very annoying healing ability to deal with. Unlike stuff like Renewing Mist from an Emperor Crab that only lasts three rounds, 
Soothing Mist lasts five rounds and will persist persist through swap. So if you totally want to swap out, that is perfectly fine. Your pet's still going to get healed regardless. Pretty annoying ability to deal with, I'd have to say. Ice Tomb. Basically, you set it and forget it. Goes up in the air for a couple turns. Comes back down, does decent damage, and will stun the opponent for one round. Pretty good ability in its own. And also... Another one of those abilities, I think, that if you were to use um, Seer Magic, it will activate instead of just flat out go away. So keep that in mind as well. And then Slippery Ice, which is another annoying ability. Basically, you set it out, does a little bit of damage, and leaves a little effect that not only consists, I mean, consider your opponent's pets chilled, but reduces their hit chance by set 20% for 4 rounds. In my experience, I miss all the damn time under stuff like Slippery Ice or Stench. But stench is actually worse, I think, than Slippery Ice. But, uh, yeah, pretty annoying ability. Can be useful at times if, um, if you can get lucky and your opponents just miss a whole bunch. Overall, I think he is a pretty good pet, situationally. I almost want to call him a low tier 1 pet. <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. I know a lot of people probably disagree. Uh, the move sets I would run would be Lash, because you have Flash Freeze here to help you get faster, so take advantage of Lash. Flash Freeze is just a great ability on its own. Uh, let's see, Slippery Ice or Ice Tomb. Huh, if you want to be a really annoying player, probably go with Slippery Ice, but uh, Ice Tomb might be the better way to go, since it does more damage and that stun is pretty damn good. Overall, I definitely recommend getting this pet. I do enjoy this pet. I've used it a couple times and will probably use it more during the Critter Week. Pretty fun pet to play, I mean, yeah, I can't get the words out. Pretty fun pet to play around with. Definitely my favorite out of all of them. And then, of course, what would this video be without the reward? Happiness. So upon collecting all of these pets, you will be rewarded with this fabulous pet named Happiness. It was an elemental type in its own right. It is a power power breed. Has a crap ton of health for a power power type. A lot of attack power obviously. And slow as shite, but that is perfectly fine. Because what it's got going for it is Corrupted Touch, which is a unique ability only to him. Does some upfront damage. And then for... Four rounds, if you count the round that it's put out, it will do over 400 damage, not counting crits, and not on a critter type that it does less damage to, or a mechanical type that it does more damage to. Um, pretty cool ability, and then it's got Seaf, which is a basic attack, Corrupted Ground, which is also a unique ability only to him. It basically works like a Death and Decay, except it is an elemental damage overtime effect. And it also has a pretty cool uh, cosmetic effect to it as well. Call Darkness, a heavy hitting weather effect, especially since he has so much attack power, it hits over 500. We'll consider all your pets blinded, and then reduces your hit chance by 10%, and all healing done by 50%. Obviously, elementals like himself will ignore the healing effect as well as the hit chance effect, which is awesome because. Holy crap, do you miss a whole lot under Call Darkness and uh, Sandstorm. Now, the really big kick in the nuts here is this slot right here. Void Portal or Dark Reaper. Void Portal is basically like a very, very, very crappy version of Fade or Portal. Basically, we'll go first just like them. Uh, we'll swap in your highest health pet. But you will take damage from this, and keep in mind, this damage can stack as well as crit. So, in my experience, if you guys have watched my uh, Happiness Spotlight, I had both Shatter Defense up on me, as well as Black Claw. I used Void Portal, and I didn't take that much damage either, and I completely one-shot myself using Void Portal. Not, with, not even with a crit. It did over a thousand damage the rest of my health that I had so it was pretty insane I almost lost the battle because of it <laughs> which was pretty funny 
Yeah, I don't like this ability at all, but uh, really you have to choose one of these. So basically it's like pick your poison. And Dark Rebirth. Uh, only Happiness and I believe the Phoenix Hatchling actually have this ability. And how it works is you throw it up when you know you're about to die. Um, you come back to life after dying, but you lose 20% of health per round while you're still alive. As well as um, the damage that you're going to be taking from your opponent overall. But something that you can do. Hold on, let me find a pet real quick. Uh oh. His uh, spelling of his name is escaping me. I know he's got food coma. Oh, Perry. Now, something I have seen my good buddy Linica do is use uh, Dark Rebirth and then use High Fiber. Which will remove all that stuff. I'm sure that um, uh, Seer Magic will work the same. But basically it will remove that little debuff from your happiness. And then uh, I believe he just stops flat out taking that, um, that damage every turn. And you can use Dark Rebirth over and over again. But uh, what's really shitty is that um, if you throw up Dark Rebirth and your opponent sees it. They're, and they're smart, they're not going to be dumb enough and they're going to be like, oh, he wants me to kill him. They could just either swap out, not attack you, pass, or whatever, and you just, the effect just doesn't go off because you don't get killed. Now overall, this is a pretty awesome achievement reward, I have to admit. I mean, he's cute as hell, look at him. Now for PvP, I'd say he's probably low tier 1. Maybe high tier 2. Uh, a lot of people in Discord thought he was just going to be broken with his Corrupted Touch. But it works differently than we thought. Uh, the moveset I would go with. Uh, really both of these are good. But probably Corrupted Touch for that nice dot damage. Corrupted Ground or Call Darkness. Again, both are good. Uh, might go for Corrupted Ground though. And then really this right here. It really depends on what my team composition is going to be to decide on this. But um, most times I actually do run a Void Portal, even though it sucks ass. But um, yeah, you have to choose your poison one way. It's just about how hard you take it. <laughs> oh, is that how the saying goes? I don't even know. But uh, yeah, that is uh, Raiding with Leashes 6, Pets of Pandaria, all the pets that I mentioned as well as the achievement reward right here happiness so a pretty pretty great selection that we have here for uh, rating with leashes I'm really looking forward to the next one not sure when it's gonna be but um can only speculate that it will be on the warlords of Draenor but uh yeah that will wrap it up for this one friends again just a overview of all the pets whether or not they would probably do good in PvP and all their abilities and such and what to get them. Uh, really hope you guys enjoy if you have any questions or concerns about these pets or maybe opinions about them on your own. Feel free to let me know in the comments. I will love to hear what you guys say about these things. But um, yeah, this is Kovac and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.